Today, students, we are doing part 6 of chapter 3 for standard 6, Diversity in Living Things and their Classification. Let's read, understand and enjoy the lesson. This video was made just for you. Do remember to like, share and subscribe. Now think about this. Names of animals which lay eggs and others which give birth to young ones. So we know that some animals give eggs, isn't it? They lay eggs and some animals directly give birth to young ones. So which are they? Can you name some of them? Let's learn about reproduction. Now we have learned that producing another living thing like oneself, similar, same like one own self is called reproduction. Now we know that hens lay eggs and hatches them. Hatches means the eggs will break open and the little young ones which are called the chicks will come out. Okay, after a few days. So hen lays eggs and then after a few days the uh, eggs will hatch and the chickens will come out. So the hen doesn't lay, you know, doesn't reproduce the chicks directly. It will lay eggs and the uh, eggs will hatch out after some days and the chickens will come out. Whereas in animals like the cow, it gives birth directly to a young calf. Okay, so this calf at first is there in the mother's stomach, that is the cow's stomach for a period of a few months. So in this case, in the case of a cow, it is living in the cow for a period of 9 months and then after 9 months, the, the cow will give birth directly to a calf. So, according to how they reproduce, that is mode of reproduction, animals can be classified into two parts two types, namely oviparous. Now, oviparous is animals which lay eggs. So, all the animals, that is most of the birds, all the birds, all the reptiles give, lay eggs. They don't give birth to young ones directly. So, such animals that lay eggs are called oviparous, whereas animals that give birth directly to young ones, okay, like the dog, the cat, the elephant, the cow, they are called viviparous because they give birth directly to young ones. So, we can classify animals as oviparous and viviparous. Now, think about this. Where are the animals, namely a horse, a bear, a tortoise, an alligator, a fish, a deer and a frog to be found? Are they all to be found at one place? No, isn't it? Some animals live on land, some animals live in water, whereas there are some animals like the frog that live both on land and in water. So, according to their habitat, that is, where they live, we can classify the animals. So, the animals that live on land are called terrestrial animals and the animals that live in the water, that is the fishes, the octopus, the turtles, all these animals are called the aquatic animals. But, there are animals like the frog, the salamander, the toad that live both on land as well as in the water. So, they can breathe, they can survive on land as well as in the water. So, such animals are called amphibious, amphibious animals or amphibians in short. So, we can classify the animals based on where they live. So, if they live on land, they are called terrestrial, whereas if they live in water, they are called aquatic and those animals that can live both on land and water are called amphibians. Now, we know that birds like the kite, the eagle, a crow, as well as a butterfly, a honeybee, all fly in the air. So, though they live in different places, that is, they are not to be found in one place, they you'll find them everywhere. So, though they live in different places, these animals, they fly in the air. So, therefore, they are said to have an aerial mode of life. Now, use your brain power. What are the different criteria used to clarify animals? 
Now we just learnt about the various ways how we can classify the animals. So go to the lesson and you can jot down the points as to what are the different ways we can classify the animals. And to compare your answer, do visit our website at www.jkacademypro.com. Always remember, in the living world, a lot of diversity is seen both in animals and in plants. So, we just read about it that not only animals but also plants show a variety, variety in the shape, the size, how high they grow and how, how they are able to survive. So, all this diversity we find in the living world. Now, every plant and animal is unique, is very different, it has special features. No two animals, no two, two plants are the same. We should all make efforts to conserve this diversity in the living world. So, we should not destroy any of the habitats. We should see as human beings that we are able to take care of these living things, that is not only plants, but also other animals. So, what have we learned? We have learned that plants are classified on the basis of their height and the shape of stems, period of life cycle and the habitat. So, these are the different ways we can classify the plants on the basis of the height, the basis of the shape of the stems and how long they live. So, that is the period of life cycle and where do they live? That is called the habitat. Also, we can also classify animals on the basis of their cell structure. That is whether they are unicellular or multicellular. The vertebral column, whether they have the vertebral column. So, they are called vertebrates. And if they don't have a vertebral column, they are called invertebrates. Then, method of reproduction, whether they lay eggs. So, if they lay eggs, they are called oviparous. And if they give birth to young ones, so they are called viviparous. As well as the habitat where they live. So, which place they live. If they live on land, they are called terrestrial. If they live in water, they are called uh, aquatic. As well as if they live both on land and water, they are called amphibians. Then we have also seen that there are birds which have the aerial mode of uh, life. That is, they fly in the air. So, this is how we can classify the various plants and animals. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Solve this exercise given to you in your textbook. To check your answers for these textual exercises and for more free worksheets, please visit our website at www.jkacademypro.com. Thank you.